Good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Trevor, and I am your one-armed bandit in the bush. Today we're going to be heading out. It's our fifth day out on the trail, so we're going to be heading out and exploring. There's a lot of great places we're going to go and see. So try and hang in there right till the end until you see the campsite we're going to get. It is absolutely fantastic. So, without any further ado, let's get on with the show. All right, so here we are at the Penny Tree. Tim has already fed it, so now it's my turn. Drop one in the can. There you go. Oh, I dropped it on the floor. So, let's pick it up. See what that looks like when you have to do things in one hand, hold the camera, all that kind of stuff. Sorry about the wind, folks, but there we go. One in the tree. So here we are, gold dome mill and as you can see there's a lot of graffiti painting here so there's some great effects that we're going to look at so i'm going to move around in video from different angles uh, the question that one would pose i mean the graffiti sure it's part and parcel of it makes it what it is the only question is is it everybody's thing and would everybody consider it as preservation Personally, I don't mind, but I don't know that it's for everybody. So I apologize for the wind noise in advance. This is from the opposite end. Uh, and I tell you what, the graffiti is really well done. You pan around, take a look down there at the Dead Wrong Crew, the Grim Reaper. Awesome. So I mean, a lot of good work. But as I say, is this preservation in everybody's opinion? So this is a bit of a close-up on the graffiti. Let me just pan across it. You, this actually looks like it's freshly painted. And uh, some great artistry. I would imagine that it, uh, it takes a particular skill to be able to produce art like this. I don't know how long these guys would have worked on it. But my goodness, look at that. It really is some work, ain't it? So I'm actually inside one of the sheds. This is a view of the shed as I pan around. Let me try and zoom out a bit. My apologies for that sudden jump. Uh, I will work on my photography skills, my cinematic skills and all those kind of things. But this is still new and fun. Really some amazing imagery that has been created. If you think that, you know, some of the, a lot of that stuff's been cut out. So they've needed to bring, you know, torches to cut the metal. Before they decided to come and paint. So let's walk in a little bit inside here and see what we can find inside. So going a little bit deeper. around this way and out the other side but you can see there is countless works here and the machinery that's left I mean this uh, this really looks quite amazing I could imagine if someone were to come out here and decide hey I want to do a little bit of iron punk or whatever it's called steampunk iron punk probably steampunk uh, excuse my ignorance if I display it Yeah, really, really cool. Out in the desert. And boy, they have got graffiti on everything. Let me pull back from this image again. And as I walk around and back, you will see how that's been cut out and then painted. But the effect of it, is absolutely incredible. Just look at that. Awesome. Great creativity. So I'm standing on the porch of this farm cavern 
And as you look, this is the view this person would have had from this porch. Great little cabin. And as you can hear by the sound of where I'm standing right now, there's absolutely hardly anyone. So a great treat. I'm glad Tim decided to turn around and bring me here. Ain't this awesome? Let's see, I'll come around the corner here a little. But you're probably going to hear it, but it won't pick up anymore. There you go. Look at this. This is off the backyard. What a cabin. So there's a great little stop in this cabin. A uh, very interesting story. A guy by the name of Ben Smith built this cabin. He was a World War I veteran, and when he returned from Europe, his lungs were so badly scarred that he really didn't expect to live long. So he came out here out of desperation and built this cabin. And uh, lo and behold, he expected not to last too long, but finished the cabin and continued to live in it for another 25 years. So cut a long story short, dry desert air is absolutely good for you, particularly for the respiratory system. So, a lot to be learned from a fella called Ben Smith. Uh, he had two buddies that came out with him back then, fellow veterans that helped him out. He kept goat and stuff in the pen, which is still there. And then in later years, it was found by an artist, uh, Carl, I'll forget his last name, we'll have to look on the picture that I took of the plaque. But anyway, he came out here and started selling art and lived in that cabin. And he continued to do so, I forget when he started, but until 2003, uh, in which time he moved to New Mexico. But, you know, he would say how many people would come out and expressed to him how they envied his lifestyle. So solitude, the sanctuary of nature, being in its embrace, irrespective of the, flow of the grid it is, absolutely awesome experience. So, lovely little scene. So, let's see what else we got to find out here today. You know, as I'm driving down this trail, I can't help but be grateful. Overlanding is a most magnificent experience, you know. I met him exactly once, once, at a show, yeah, yet he was kind enough to offer to lead me down this trail when I reached out to him saying to him, hey, I'm coming out west, you know, if you're around, it would be great if we could catch up and do a ride together, and here we go, so folks, jump in, get into Overland, if you want to meet magnificent people who absolutely will always extend their hand in friendship and in help when you're in trouble or not or you just want someone to hang out with etc on a trail you'll find that the more folk that you meet in this game the more friendships you will develop that even though they may not have existed a lifetime would certainly feel as if you had known folk like this for a very very long time so i'm extremely grateful thank you to Mao. All right, so I'm going to try and hold the phone and see if I can record a little bit of footage of the trail here. But you know, it's a shaky shake, slow going, and of course, as you can see, um, it's not necessarily a bad idea to hold the steering wheel when you are driving down trails like this. There you can see Tim rocking there, it's getting quite technical. So, I'm afraid that's where I'll have to end it. So here we go folks, this is the end of another day and Mojave has not failed to deliver yet again. I'm apologizing if this wind is tough. It really has been blowing, look at that, straight through down into the valley, gorge. There's a pan around. The vehicles. We try to block the wind, but I'm afraid it's not really. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. We're now uh, hitting out onto day number three 
um, of our trail on the Mojave Desert. Tim and I spent yesterday basically camped out and exploring, uh, looking at some old mines, going into the shafts, etc., and working on our rigs. So today we're heading on further into Mojave Desert and we're going to go and explore. So, yeah, no real plan. We'll find another great campsite. Unfortunately, we are inside the reserve already, so I'm afraid there is no more drone footage we can take until I get out of the reserve. Um, but I will see what I can get for you today. Uh, and certainly, hopefully, we get a great campsite this evening. Uh, we can catch up again and see how things went. But right now, we're about to get going yet again. Speak you later. So here we go. We've come to visit the lava tubes. Quite amazing. If you look at the ride from back there where we came. And there goes Tim. Down he goes. We're going to go and have a look and see if we can see a little bit of magic. So why don't you stay there? And so whilst this is not necessarily the best time of the day, or potentially the year to see the sunlight shining through in the lava tubes. But there you go, no mistaking that. Absolutely fantastic. So we've actually come up here to take a look at an old open cast mine. So we're kind of at uh, one of the high points of the mine, which has been abandoned now for quite some time. One of the beauties of coming is something like this is they always leave cool stuff behind and look at that man isn't that something hey, as a young kid i could only imagine playing in stuff like this but you know unfortunately tim's with me so as an old guy he's probably still not gonna let me play in amongst all of these things uh, but it really is gorgeous i know the wind is blowing a bit so it's probably gonna make the audio unpleasant thing that you'll find out here in the desert is that you'll see that these frogs man i tell you something they are a naughty bunch but of course you know if you look you can see uh, these two are so happy together yeah that's the way to do it man be happy together sleeping knees free kisses oh and look at this dude he's chilling in his tube Wow, ain't that something? There's a whole lot of frogs out. Yeah, that's for sure. Look at them. They're all just chilling here in the shade, man. All right, and here comes Tim in his tundra. So we've kind of arrived at, I think, what's going to be our camp spot for tonight. If I just pan around. We'll get a good look at it. I just want to wait and get Tim in in position.
That's the only reason why those rocks are there. I guarantee they were brought here by wheelbarrow, willing, able gentlemen. I wish to thank you on behalf of all overlanders for bringing these rocks to this place.